Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Culture of Paint. On tonight's show we're going to take a look at what's caught our eye over the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For our main topic we're going to discuss the influence of an artist on a game setting and the miniatures with our very special guest Mark Gibbons and then we'll close the show out as normal taking a look at what the chat's up to and what our hashtag paint cultists have been doing. Culture of Paint is aimed at a mature audience, we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. Now let's talk about paint. And um, we are back, I believe. The chat's in there. Yes, they are. Everyone's waving. All the lights are on. Hi, everyone. It's Henry here. And as usual, I'm joined by Matt, Andy and Rich. And tonight we've got a very special guest, Mark, joining us as well. So how are you, gents? Well, good. Good, mate. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, very so excited. Yeah, well, I, I think quite a lot of people are excited, you know, but we're uh, <laughs> I think uh, the show might be a tiny bit longer than usual tonight, guys, if we uh, if we manage to wind Mark up and get him going um, <laughs> and we can just sit here and sit here and listen. Um, but let's kick it off as usual. What's been happening over the last few weeks? I think it's been about three weeks in it since the last episode. Yeah. So there's plenty, plenty out there. Time um, means nothing. It does, well, yeah, true. <laughs> Starting to again, though. Um, fire up them slides, Matt. What we uh, starting deep. Who's up first? So, first up, that's my one. Nice. The chameleon from Skinks, or what they called now, Seraphon? Seraphon! No, Skinks. Yeah. Lizardman. So, frog, with, frog with chameleon attached. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. this is... I brought this up because yeah. it's... They'll poison this pen, so it's awesome. <laughs> it is, I brought this up because it's... This is actually my favourite miniature GW have ever made. Um, really? Yeah. It's, That's awesome. Why? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. It's just... I saw when they did the um, the preview, I just went, yes, that, that, yes. Is, that is the best. It's, it's just so different from, from like stuff they <laughs> usually make. It's, it, I mean, it is a mm. skink or a lizardman or whatever it is, but it's... It's more critter like than usual, which mm. is top mm. critter. Ten out of yeah. ten critter points. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. it's it's excellent for that. Obviously, um, <laughs> I know there was some discussion around whether he was blowing or sucking on the pipe <laughs> <laughs> um, when it first released. Um, I think his cheeks, his cheeks are full. His cheeks this are is full. it. That's why I think oh, the argument was in the end. Yeah, was the the cheeks were uh, <laughs> the cheeks were doing that. Someone should sculpt some smoke coming out of his nose. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, uh... well, there's always been that slight tongue in cheek, hasn't there, with the, the lizard men and their sort of narcotics and things like that and, and, and yeah. slime. Um, the, name, the, name, the naming conventions were always running gags back in yeah. the day. Itsy um, yeah. uh, Witsy and Teeny Weeny. Yeah, tic, tic Tac Toe. That was one, wasn't it? Was... <laughs> yeah. Now, it's nice to see them still having fun. I don't know if it still is, but I, I know the first sort of season or two of, of Underworlds, where this one's from, often the the little war bands were uh, a miniature sculptor's sort of almost trial run. Is that right, Andy? Sort of, not necessarily trial run, but I think a, a lot of the sculptors were given one, weren't they, to do? Yeah, like first assignments, maybe. Yeah. Stuff. And um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, th I don't know if that's the case with all of them or some purpose, mm. but I, I remember um, uh, one of them just saying their first assignment was uh, a war band. So mm. maybe that's maybe that's it. But it's, uh, it's been a, I think it's been a fantastic like, idea, like letting them explore the slightly weirder stuff or the, yeah. you know, the the sculpts. We were probably never going to get a box of chameleon skinks, but at least we've got we've got one, one cool one. one. And the best one as well. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a big fan. And I mean, we haven't mentioned yet. Obviously, a lovely paint job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's a brilliant miniature, brilliant paint job, and just yeah, I, I love the miniature. I, I can't bring myself to paint it though. It's it's too too cool for me to paint. I just. Oh come on, mate! Right, gotta get done, mate. Do it. <laughs> set, set yourself the you've got to set yourself the limit. Like you've got one evening to paint it. That's it. Done. You, you don't paint anything, Matt. Come on, man. I know. 
right, Matt, you've got that. Like, you have to do that. Like this, just you've said it's your favourite of all time. If you don't do that, it's just I, yeah. God, we'll do a painting evening one night. We'll do a Skype session and just pick one model, get it finished. That's it. Start to finish one session. Bon. Job done. Contrast yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. No stripping, Andy. So <laughs> next up. Not live. Next up, oh, this is kind of like a joint one because I think Andy, you picked it, and I also picked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a joint group selection because you, obviously you can't not not pick it. So mm. but you can probably speak about it better than I can. <laughs> oh, Boulder Dash. Uh, we can joint speak about it. Um, yeah, just quite an unusual uh miniature not really seen many like this and uh yeah it's great to see mark paint this the the skin is just absolutely fantastic and uh when we eventually get around to that episode i definitely think it's starting to blur those lines of art and miniature mm. art and uh i think the rendering of the skin and and all the colors and everything is just it's just amazing, and uh, I'm glad that he was the one who did the box art for us because I think his style of uh, not sketchy is the wrong word, but you know what I'm trying to say that yeah. an illustration style. Well. Yeah. 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 Wonder what what do you think of that sort of thing, Mark? Like this kind of this style of painting on a miniature. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of blown away by it. It's uh, it, it's not my my forte at all. I'm very much sort of tabletop focused. So anytime I see, uh, uh, you know, what, what feels to me like a genuine uh, uh, illustrative, illustrative technique applied to miniatures with light and, and shade and stuff, yeah, it, uh, it, it really impresses me. Um, yeah, and it doesn't occur to me, but I think because um, my, my, I, I look at it and I assume that, that the, the shading and stuff is, is a simply a product of the, of the lighting falling across it, mm. but it's not, that's, that's rendered into the into the uh, into the paint job, it, yeah, it's kind of uh, phenomenal. Mm. Yeah, good this, to get this. I mean, it's Mark. Oh yeah, we we. I mean, Mark's popped up a few times now, hasn't he, over the last sort of handful of shows? But he just he does seem to be absolutely pumping out these these stunners. Yeah, he's killing it. Yeah, it's nice to see. Be nice to see. Nice to see him in the flesh soon, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll have getting, to get on one day. Definitely getting a bit, bit not, not tired of seeing stuff online because I'll never be tired of seeing cool minis. But I am itching to see some. I think the only painted miniatures I've seen pretty much in the last couple of months has been whatever's on the shelf behind Andy um, <laughs> or or Amari. You know, there's very, very. I, I need to see. Oh, yeah, just need to see stuff. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, really, really looking. Events will be back next year, hopefully. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, would you ever fancy having a go at a bust or something, Mark? Like, as opposed to the gaming um, release? <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I do occasionally paint uh, paint bigger scale stuff, mm. but I, I um, I'm trying to think if I've painted anything anything like one of these. I don't think so. It's I think because um, my my sort of painting goals because because I started painting uh, at you know um, to paint miniatures for gaming for D and D and for uh, the, the little Middle Earth tabletop battles I used to fight as a, as a teen. Uh, the stuff that gets me really excited is still painting mm -hmm. stuff at that scale with a focus to, uh, to build stuff to game with. Even if I don't end up gaming, I'll always go, okay, I want to paint a unit. It's yeah. very rare that I paint a single miniature. So it's not, I'm gonna, you know, it's why we talk about things like the, uh, um, uh, the Beast Grave stuff, the Underworld stuff. It's like, that's, that's perfect for me because it's, four or five miniatures mm. so it's a project i can i can tackle that won't stretch on for the next two years as i'm trying mm. to paint a 2000 point army of something but it'll scratch that itch to paint oh i want to do some orcs well i don't want to paint an orc army i don't want to deal with a horde of miniatures but you know there's three there's three figures in this um underworld set i can lavish all the attention i want on that um so the bus that i do i mean i have a collection of of, of, of bus that i bought at shows but they're they're all there and the unfinished or unpainted mm. resin mm. and i do think well at some point i should probably have a go at one of them <laughs> just just to, just to see how well i can i can tackle it but yeah it's kind of well, I'm a little bit daunted by again by by the sort of examples of, of mark stuff here yeah. okay how am i gonna how am i gonna tackle that <laughs> yeah 
Uh, it's a good. And what's this range from, Andy? This is a. Uh, you said it was. Um, he's done a bunch of box art. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it was, they, they have it. Um, I think it was released this weekend on their miniatures day, uh, sale. Um, and this was the box art for that. Um, cool. It's pretty cool. You should definitely ever go pick nice. it up. <laughs> yeah, so that's FER miniatures. I'll make a yeah. I'll make a note of that and pop it in. Uh, pop it in. Right. What's so, up next? Next up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I nearly picked this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I picked this for a few reasons. Um, Kieran is mostly a heresy painter, and he's done every single legion, and every one is a, a great example of that legion. And uh, it was really cool to see him do uh, something not heresy. But also, I think this is one of my favourite examples of the Stormcast that mm. I've seen. Um, probably is my favourite, and mostly because of the the metallics. I just think that um, it sounds silly, but seeing it silver instead of gold makes it a lot nicer for me. I think, like, uh, just really cool. And I think it's, um, yeah, just uh, not in a bad way, but like a simple scheme that works so well. And I thought it looks great as one model, and it would look incredible as an army. And uh, yeah, I just love everything about it, and uh, I've not seen many of these models that have really got me going, but I thought this one was great. So uh, what do you think about it, Henry, since you uh, were planning on picking it? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Kieran as a as a hobbyist, generally. I just like what he does. Um, mm. But I mean, you and me have talked countless hours, probably, about schemes for Stormcasts. You know, I, I think it's something that, that we've we've mm. both really wanted to try and do some we both really like the idea of it but there's never quite been the model or the scheme that's pushed us to, to actually do one um and i think we sort of both were like yeah if it's fantasy do we want the armor to be metallic rather than colored and great then i went off on some rabbit hole and found out that oh actually you lacquered armor and you could color it and you could do all that and then i was like oh well, maybe that <laughs> is accurate then for fan oh i don't know and <laughs> Just on and on and on. So what I love is when people do, I've always found with, with and whether or not it's self-centered, I don't know, but often I will, I'll paint something because I want to see an orc or space marine or whatever done in that style. Mm. And when I do it, I want it to be my favorite interpretation of that thing. You know, if I, mm. if I, if I paint an ultramarine, it's because I want to, it's because I haven't seen an ultramarine that's exactly how it is in my mind. Kind of. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah. I love it when someone does one that is exactly in my mind and I'm like, oh, great. I haven't got to do it. Like, <laughs> I, haven't got to, I haven't got to paint one just to scratch that itch. I can just look at Kieran. and scrape. You know, like, job done. Um, he, <laughs> yeah. is, he is absolutely like, it's relentless, his output at the moment. So he's, he's going back through and doing all the legionnaires again from from heresy um, wow. as well as some, some other bits and bobs. He's He's got a real bug at the minute for it. I don't know. Maybe he's he's in one of those lockdowns in over in Oz. I'm not sure. But um, he's really, really motoring through them. Um, but yeah, this mini, I keep seeing it everywhere. Is it like the it's free one you get in the shop yeah. or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a new store free one. Right, get right, them right. free from the <laughs> store. <laughs> Why is wow. everyone getting this mini? <laughs> well i was like it's not in the box and i'm like where's it coming from um it's, it's the push yeah. it one nice nice yeah it's big, amazing big, big fans in the chat there yeah, yeah like the actual the, the bit of the model itself to put together for like just the, the push fit one that you can if you've never done the hobby before and you go into yeah. a games workshop and you want to have a go painting it you imagine like the, that that's your first mini the, oh. the quality of that model for mm -hmm. something that you can just use if you've never had a go at painting before is mental it's such a good model it's, it's a so nice clever. It's nicely done as well, isn't it? For a like, if to introduce someone to to Age mm. of Sigma, like his his here it is in a model, mm. you know. And and I think it's like because so, sometimes you'll get the the Space Marine or the or the whatever f for the thing, and sometimes I feel like the posing on it might be a little bit like hard to un, paint. Un, un, yeah, unfriendly to a new a new painter or, or whatever. Yeah. But this is just it's lovely, isn't it? It's open. You yeah. know, it's it's heroic. It's it's just 
you know, if you, like you, you look at that, you you know, oh, okay, that's probably a good guy, debatable, you know, depending on who, you know. Anyway, Sigmar's a horrible dictator, but he's, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, it's, it's clearly heroic. It's clearly someone in a big armored suit. This is fantastical. I'm intrigued. I want to. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and Kieran's nailed it, hasn't he? Yeah, top job. Yeah. Rob, uh, Rob Grayson in the chat's just saying he's just jumped on Kieran's Instagram and is loving it. Yeah, his Empress Children. It's got big Empress Children army. He's been doing that for a long time. Really, really fantastic. Nice one. Right. Okay. Start next, Matt. Next up is one of yours, Mark. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, Rochelle. Uh, I discovered her, her work uh, uh, not long ago. I mean, I know uh, um, she's sort of one half of a, of, of a miniature power couple, and her husband is uh, Paolo Parente, who uh, is a fantastic artist and the, mm. and the creative force behind Dust Tactics. Um, and then he just oh, started yeah, sharing yeah. some of her, <laughs> he just started sharing some of her paint jobs on, on, on Facebook, and it <laughs> blew my mind, because this stuff is just extraordinary. It's just a, just a, a, a Exquisite work. Um, her, her command of color and, and shade and lighting is just uh, uh, really, really remarkable. She's amazing. Uh, yeah, this uh, this is my favorite Games Workshop miniature. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm just thinking about how to do it. And I was so jealous of this base. Uh, the base is immense, right? Yeah, it's because yeah. it's like um, it comes with the ruin. But she's obviously added the bits below, like mm. it's come through the ground. So she's continued the Games Workshop sculpt and then the sort of the teal glow and how that comes up through. And it's actually quite a minimal palette, but it's just, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that, again, that's, I think there's a tendency to, for a piece like this to think, oh, I've got to throw every colour at it. Yeah. And actually to, to, to be deliberately restrictive. And even the metallic, even the gold has a, has a sort of cool tone to it that complements the... The lighting and the and the and the grey of, the, of, the, of the, the the bird. Well, I say the bird. The, the whole creature is this beautiful, cool grey palette. Yeah, amazing. Stunning, isn't it? I Great love a good it. hobby power couple as well. Like, <laughs> that's, I had no idea. Like that's dust, what they call us, mate. Is it? That's nice. That's <laughs> nice. If we could. Well, if we can aspire to this, like the most that, powerful. Dust is still the best. The best miniatures game I've played. I absolutely loved it, and I and I love the fact that Paolo got got the control back and uh, was able to to take it where he wanted to take it but yeah i had absolutely no idea um he was he was one part of the i mean this is yeah this is right up my street uh, very cool limited yeah. palette delicious nice yeah, that face is insane isn't it mm -hmm. um, this is the yeah. um the one with uh what's his face the other little miniature dude that's doing techless. The, techless yeah he's doing the pole <laughs> vault stance YMCA, yes. mate. YMCA. Yeah. He's enormous as well. Like I, when we first saw the photos of this, like it, it made it look like the the beast was significantly bigger than Teclis. Um, but when you see him in the model, like Teclis is a, a right unit. He's a, big, he's a big dude. Yeah. But yeah, I think. I mean, it's just a. I think what's nice about this model as well is, and I think particularly when it's been painted like like this, is any fantasy game you're playing you know if you're playing a, a even like an rpg campaign or something and there's there's some creepy ass spirit of the insert here um like what an amazing model like to use for it um, yeah. i do I, th I think one of the best things to have come out of of age of sigmar is the, just the amount of of beasts mm. they're willing to do um yeah. You know, it's it's just, and and I get a lot of that's also the the technology and and all the rest of it, but but just that freedom and and to see them to see them really exploring it. Um, this is this is this is the nicest version of this one I've seen. Agree, yeah, 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 yeah. Great pick. Nice. Right, what we got up next? Right? So next up is another one of Mark's, and I thought this was epic, so I oh. just had to include it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, again, it's um, with uh, uh, Michael Anderson, a of Games Workshop compiler oh, yeah. in mind. What I love about his work, well, I, there's so many things I love about his stuff. Um, uh, uh, it, it just, it's just the sort of the quintessential tabletop paint jobs in that they're beautiful, 
but they're, they're, they're clean, you know, from an arm's length away when you're looking down at the table, they just pop. Um, he also does amazing uh, scenery. Uh, um, so yeah, anytime uh, Michael puts something up, uh, uh, it, it's always just, it's exactly what it needs to be. You know, it's not, it's not, he's, he's not overindulgent. He, he's appropriately indulgent in, in everything that he does. Um, and there's always this very little narrative with these pieces as well. I mean, th these three were part of a, um, I think it was a couple of different narratives of, of combat. And you can just imagine that being, that being a gaming afternoon where somebody's brought along their little war band and then there's a troll coming out of the river at you and there's a barrel white that leaps out at your party. It all yeah. just, it just all hangs together, these lovely little stories. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, uh, it, it was, it was, Mike, wasn't it, who did the, sculpted that larger scale empire um mm -hmm. soldier like i mean gosh yeah 15 years ago or whatever. yeah um and it was yeah. it was one of those i always remember reading in like white dwarf you you get the occasional comment where like one of the sculptors would just sculpt one of the painters a miniature for their birthday present you know or or in Mike, michael's case you know oh, i wanted to paint a large scale empire because at the time i think he was a he was he was heavy metal before he was sculptor. Is that correct? I think. Right? I think so. Yeah. I think it was that way around. And then he, he just sort of you sort of know him as this wonderful, as you say, clean painter. Um, and then just goes, oh, yeah, well, I'll just sculpt this phenomenal looking you know, <laughs> empire soldier. And they, there you go. And you're like, that's the sort of paragon of the. Of the, of the whole yeah episode. really yeah i get nervous about if, I, if i've got to get the green stuff out and and yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a you know i've got to join a couple of pieces together with a bit of green stuff i go oh, can i not just find a bit of plastic kit and just cover yeah. that over so i don't yeah. have to you know <laughs> wasn't it him and martin foot it yeah it just between them two in the yeah, area another power like, couple there you go yeah like <laughs> what should we fancy sculpt what should we sculpt from scratch yeah. that's absolutely oh, that, perfect it was <laughs> him and foot it because foot it did the uh the elf. Oh, elf, the high yeah. elf. But yeah. that—that's just that was that. That's, that mm -hmm. was my entry into Golden Demon Land. That that was the first thing right. I ever saw in a cabinet. That's why yes. I wanted to do Dareguard, fifty-four mil elves. He made that yeah. one. There ain't been any since. <laughs> see why it's good to see the uh, the more time sprue still getting some use as well. Um, yeah, that's whatever great. it is. Twenty twenty years on. I love the uh, the small like <laughs> AOS old school war band. Like just a day, like an afternoon playing that on like a really yeah. cool looking board just sounds yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's that proper escapism. Yeah, nice, yeah, lovely, cool, very nice. Uh, any more, Matt? Yeah, there's you. Oh, wow. wow, this was me. It's a hell of a, uh, a fantasy theme tonight. It's pretty much all of them, isn't it? Mm. That's okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure, we'll get good. some Space Marines later. Don't worry. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so, yeah, so this is my pick. I have a, uh, shall we say, love-hate relationship with Marmoselic Metal, uh, that, that process of painting it anyway. And I saw this and I really, really, really liked it. I love the miniatures anyway, the the, the range and Dominion. I think it's fantastic. And some people are doing some really, really cool things with it. I haven't seen too many people take a lot of time over them. I think a lot of people are using them for gaming, which is awesome, and you get some amazing-looking armies. But I think there's been a, only been a few people that I've seen that have really, really gone to town on the miniatures, and this was one of the examples of it, uh, and an incredibly good example of non-metallic gold. It's probably one of my favourite examples of non-metallic gold, to be honest. Um, I saw, I think my friend Ben sent this to me originally as like as a much smaller picture, and then went and checked it out, and yeah, it's just uh, it's just amazing. I love it. Yeah, this is my favourite Stormcast miniature. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. plucking up the courage to sort of give it a real go at some point. Yeah, yeah. quite a lot of conversion, yeah. but yeah, it's um, it's it's nice to see NMM done in a slightly different way as well. Mm. Um, it's very blingy. Yeah, it's, yeah it very, is blingy, isn't it? And tons of colour. Very, very mm. shiny. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I kind of. I I didn't warm to this stormcast initially. Um, but I, the more I see, uh, the more I see them, the more I get, kind of get to like them, and the more the more sort of conversions and, and mm. interpretations I see. Uh, uh, again, going back to um, uh, Johan Agerkran, we talked mm. about a little bit beforehand. Uh, um, his his take on them, where he, he grounds them a little more, makes them a little yeah. more gritty, a little less uh, superheroic. Mm. I, I kind of go, oh yeah, now I get it. Now I get it. Now I yeah. see them. Yeah. 
there's I've seen a few where literally the only thing someone's done is replace the weapon with a sort of quote unquote normal sized weapon. I, I think GW tend to sort of do slightly bigger heads than is realistic and, and bigger weapons, right, than is realistic uh, on, uh, to generalize. Um, so like seeing seeing one of the hammer stormcasts just with a, a small war hammer, um, yeah. it just it completely changed it. I mean, and obviously it had a right. nice grit, gritty silver paint job and all, all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, I think, and certainly these newer sculpts, I think they've done for them, mm-hmm. are going to allow people to to really get put their own stamp on them. Mm. Um, the new proportions uh, are great. Yeah, and I don't know. They just they just seem to, for me anyway, they they seem to be much more clearly sort of good chaos warriors, as it were. Um, you know, sort of right. proper pal- paladins, or you know, or, or, or that kind of thing. These these superhuman knights and and i like yeah i think i don't know i've just i don't you know when you see sometimes you see a miniature and straight away you start thinking of a little scene not necessarily a full diorama but just a little scene um and th- this one for me was it and uh i can't wait to see what this guy does um Al- alessandro does when it's finished mm. um yeah i have to keep an eye on that one Definitely. yeah great pick rich yeah nice one Next up is yours, Henry. Ah. Oh. So I fairly recently, not very recently, I've been painting a lot of orcs and goblins, and uh, I don't really want to stop. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I look at a lot of them as well. Um, a few weeks ago, I was showing the work of, of um, uh, the account Colty, um, uh, carried from Iron Sleet, and, and this is a, this is another similar um style uh, they they've i love the fact that if you want to push that sort of brian froud look with the goblins now it's it's not that hard to do um mm. I, like i always felt like it was there or thereabouts with some of the sculpts we've seen and some of the art we've seen over the years um but this this uh the person in this account is is creating effectively a whole army um and if you're doing this level of conversion on you know, <laughs> a couple of lads. Um, but again, it's, I love, this is how I want to paint. This, this I, I would be happy yeah. forever if I could just paint like this. Um, mm. Because I think yeah, the, the instantly that feeling you get from them, I'm I'm gone. You know, it's, it's. Uh, I just think they're brilliant. And um, the next, I think, did you put the squig slide in, Matt? Yeah, I got that on the next one. Yeah. So the, the squigs, um, that, that they've done to oh, go along so, i mean this is <laughs> you know it, it's i mean those, those those squigs are older than probably a lot of people watching um <laughs> you know and they're still amazing yeah, um, and i can i can remember painting and repainting and repainting them um as a kid i remember getting them and just sort of because obviously you didn't need to strip them because they were metal the paint would just fall off them as you <laughs> tell them anyway. you could just right. keep re- repainting them and repainting them um but the the palette just the presentation yeah. just 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 everything this is um yeah this amazing. is where i would like to go with my personal hobby um, yeah. and i'm i'm considering uh quite a few years ago a, a, a friend of mine moved to the states and he said oh i've got a bunch of old skaven models if you want them and i was like oh that'd be really nice thanks jim like we knew each other from the club that was it um met him a handful of times and uh, i met him at the pub and he came in with three um of game boxes you know like a, a 40k box three of them full of metal skaven um Old school. And i've sort of over the years just i've gone through and catalogued them all you know from the different eras and i've got basically one of each from the original run and i'm i'm very very tempted to sort of maybe next year have a go at doing something like this where i just yeah. pick that palette push myself a, a little um but but still with the sense of i've got to get it done in hmm. x amount of time kind of thing hmm. um and and th- this would be the sort of thing i would have on my desktop as a as an inspiration thing the um the whole of his of his instagram uh hmm. account is amazing because he's i've been following him for a while and for like the last like two years he's just consistently been putting out models of this level and he is building up to an army of it, and the level of detail of that. When he, he's, there's a few like army shots that he's got on his Instagram page, and 
like when you see it all together, it's mind blowing how how he's managed to stick to it for the last like however long he's been doing it because it's taking him a fair amount of time, obviously because of how good quality it is. But yeah, the level of, uh, the, the painting level across every miniature, every detail, every every grain of wood and every wooden <laughs> handle is paint is insane. It looks so cool. But I get I completely agree. Like I see that and I'm already thinking of like where they've come from. They're yeah, like, oh, it's a story, like, isn't it? And, and, and it's like straight said, away. If Ryan Frouth and Kane saying in the chat, it reminds him of the labyrinths and all that. That's exactly it, Kane. Like it, it's it's that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's they're very <clears throat> texture. I don't know. I don't know. But it's um anyway, that's my pick and I think they're fucking yeah, amazing. Cool. So was, yeah. I was going to say, like, because these are the original Orcs and Goblins Night Goblin kit with the Boingrot Bowser heads, I think he said so, in the comments. So, yeah, the, they're the... Island they're, of Blood. By no original. means the original. They're the, they're the last plastic version. Right, yeah. right. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's like people talking about that original Empress Champion, isn't it? No? <laughs> Remember the one with his holding sword um, up? But yeah, they, they've used those those Boingrot bounders have all got those real Brian Froud. Uh, I should have got that, but I've got that book over there somewhere of his. I've got his book on trolls and his book on goblins. Um, massive helmets, definitely Point. worth picking up. Yeah, they've got these wonderful pointy. I love them. Um, wonky wonky helmets and things. They're just um, yeah. Yeah, that it. design is amazing, isn't it? Love it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a good. Uh, that was a good first section. That was the longest we've spent yeah. on that, and it was fantastic. So. Yeah. That was a great yeah. indulgence. <laughs> yeah, absolute belters in there. Um, right, let's move on. Oh, we've got a meme. We do have a meme. You put a meme in the chat, so I put it in. Oh, you have it. <laughs> so I'm not normally that big on, on hobby memes, but this one did tickle me quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, where are we? Come on in, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll pop down the account it's true yeah. though null oil makes mm -hmm. it all better that's yeah. why I paint it's just a, a little more there you go. <laughs> never, never bought one just saying you never bought a null oil oh, no, bore, um, bore off mate I had, I had bad ab black I think. is that what it was called bad ab black uh, yeah, yeah that, was that, the, that, that was the wash wasn't yeah, it yeah. yeah I had that yeah. and I never bought the change the known oil so yeah it's a thing well, of I'm, more, I'm more of a ag, i'm more of an agrax earth jade guy yeah. actually yeah that's my point yeah that, that's, that's i think that's how you can separate detail. hobbyists right it's, yeah are you a known or are you an agrax like yeah or the, the occasional seraphim sepia oh oh yeah it's a bit too that's subtle that one mate. Yeah. <laughs> um so. but yeah there's absolutely nothing wrong with dunking in known oil <laughs> All right. Influence of the artist. Yes. So main topic for the show. Um, we've been talking a while about what we wanted to sort of shows we wanted to do in, in, in the future. And we've really enjoyed doing those shows where we've we've talked about the artwork, whether that's artwork that's inspired us to create models or whether it's, you know, art that's inspired other people and, and so on and so forth. Um, and I think it's fair to say all, all four of us are, are huge fans of fantasy artwork. Um, you know, we've all got posters, prints, T-shirts, whatever, books, all, all the rest of it. Um, and Matt recently uh, purchased uh, an original piece of fantasy artwork, um, which was uh, Gretchen like... that <laughs> marked them. Where is it? It's in the background. Where it yeah. is. Um, and then we sort of got to chatting about, oh, is it, you know, isn't it amazing the influence certain artists can have on a uh, on, on a game system, on a setting, on a world, and and then either directly or indirectly on miniatures. Um, and Matt reached out to Mark and very kindly agreed to come on and sort of chat about it and let us let us pick his brains really. Uh, and one of the reasons we really wanted someone like Mark to come on and talk about it is that you know you you you've been in the industry, Mark, from where you, you know you've worked for what's become an absolute monster of a company but you know the early days you've you've worked for companies that were already very very large and now you're working for yourself and creating you know entirely bespoke settings from from your imagination and stuff so i guess we really just wanted to sort of yeah pick your brains and find out what what it's like in oh, those yeah. different uh, situations and stuff so i think really briefly if you just want to sort of introduce yourself um to anybody who isn't aware um go go for it 
Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Mark Gibbons. I've been uh, uh, the jobbing fantasy and sci-fi artist for I don't know, about 35 years now. Um, started in the well, dropped out of art college after painting with custard and gravy after two weeks, and joined a hair metal band back when I had hair. Nice. Um, <clears throat> which is not the most um, uh, auspicious start to a career as an artist, really. Uh, but uh, yeah, for me, it was I, I was always a, a gamer. I was always I was always uh, since the age of about 12 or 13, playing tabletop games and original Guns and Dragons, and then, and then on from there. So it was always something I was um, interested in doing. And even when I was playing in bands, I was, uh, I was producing art to you know, keep me in guitar strings. Um, and then uh, I broke my arm, arm wrestling. The <laughs> British arm wrestling champion snapped my right arm just above the elbow. After three months, Jeez. I couldn't play bass, I couldn't draw or paint. And I realized during that time that the thing I missed most was not being able to do art. So that was kind of the, the, the universe giving me a, a, a nudge in the back telling me what I really should be doing. Uh, so at that point, I quit the band uh, uh, and joined Games Workshop and moved to Nottingham. Wow. Um, there we are. I really yeah, hope you tell that different. differently every time. I really hope it's not <laughs> like every time it's something different. Sometimes it's arm wrestling. Sometimes it'll be, you know, a, a stunt motorcycle accident, something, you know, be whatever. I should, I should work, I should work at some uh, alternative, <laughs> so nobody really knows the, yeah. the actual truth, <laughs> as ridiculous as the truth actually is. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I joined Workshop at the uh, at the time. They were they were growing. Um, they just moved from their little rabbit warren of built of uh, offices at Enfield Chambers into a, a swanky new spot on Castle Boulevard. Uh, and they were still they were still separate from the factory, which is out of town to Eastwood. But it was it was uh, at the time that second edition 40K was starting to come together, and the mm. first codexes codices were being were being created. So uh, yeah, it felt like um, it felt like the, 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 the company was really kind of branching out and and, and sort of developing its its intellectual property, mm. uh, uh, crafting it, building its world at that point. Um, so that was yeah, that was an exciting period, and, and I and I worked for them for um, for about five years until uh, the video game industry really kind of uh, 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 took off, uh, and I realised that oh, this opportunity to maybe do stuff again as a gamer and as a video game enthusiast, and thought oh, well, maybe that might be. I, I figured at that point I'd sort of drawn in a space room for a while <laughs> and wanted to try to do something else. Um, so yeah, I, uh, uh, I I started working. Um, uh, in video game stuff. I ended up at Sony um, initially as a concept artist and then as a lead artist um, uh, on the, the PlayStation 2 um, development at Cam in the Cambridge studio. Worked on a few games there um, uh, and then uh, decided to, to go back to the Games Workshop for a spell because the, the, the video game stuff I was working on um, uh, well, we, uh, my team, my team landed the contract to make the video game of 24, the, the TV show. And as a fantasy sci-fi enthusiast, mm -hmm. I didn't think there was a lot, although I'd still be leading the team, I, I didn't think it was something I would want to spend the next couple of years doing. Um, and I was, I've been chatting with John Blanche again, and, uh, you know, I said, might, might be nice to, you know, come back. So I went back to the studio, uh, uh, as it was then at Lenton, as it still is now. Um, as a concept artist there and got to, got to do, because I didn't do a lot of concept work um, back in the day. It was mainly illustrations that sometimes got turned into concept stuff. Um, so rejoined the studio there. That lasted for about um, 18 months. And then Andy Chambers, who was an old buddy of mine, was over at uh, Blizzard. He'd been hired uh, to, to head of creative direction on StarCraft 2. And I said to him, um, video games, in America, it sounds like a fun thing, and mm. I like losing <laughs> games, so you know, maybe, maybe that might be a, a, a thing. Uh, and then I get whisked out to California, um, where I have been ever since, working predominantly in, in video games up till about four or five years ago. So I was at Blizzard for seven years, at Riot for a couple of years, um, and then got to a point where um, I, I, I reached a bit of a watershed for myself, and I, and I thought, as, as much as I've enjoyed contributing to these, to these, you know, behemoths of the industry, helping to, helping to sort of shape these, uh, uh, these universes, help to build these worlds. It, it felt, um, I felt like I wanted to do something that, that was a bit more personal to me. Uh, uh, and so, 
uh, yeah, I, I, I went freelance again and started working uh, intentionally on, on smaller projects. Uh, the first thing I did was with, um, back with Andy Chambers, with Dark Deeds, which is an independent uh, card game that we made together. And I really, really enjoyed that process, not just being you know, a concept artist or an illustrator, but actually sort of helping to craft the game, doing all the, the, the marketing stuff, doing the packaging, um, and working on little expansions and things like that. And so that really lit a fire inside me to want to continue making these, um, these, these um, more personal projects. Uh, and which brings me now where, where I'm, uh, I'm uh, one of the uh, founders of uh, Rookery Publications, which is a, uh, a new studio, uh, myself um, and some other Games Workshop alumni have set up um, to develop uh, uh, RPG uh, products. Um, and I'm the only artist. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to have some fantastic writing talent. Graham Davies, who is a legend of Games Workshop, Andy Law as well, of course, um, Andy Lee and, and, uh, and Lindsay Law. Um, and and it's, it's uh, again, something that's, that's um, a shared uh, personal enthusiasm for a sort of a bespoke, sort of intimate world that, that we're getting to build uh, and, and build a community, which is something I've not had the opportunity to do before. There's, been, there's always been big communities involved, big enthusiastic groups. Uh, at Games Workshop, and of course, I think about Blizzard with World of Warcraft. You know, you, you dip your toe into those amazing, amazingly supportive communities. But here we are now, building a new one from from scratch and engaging with the community and getting them, getting their contribution and saying, "Well, what do you want? What are you looking for in this product?" And that's been uh, a new experience for me that I've really kind of enjoyed. That that connecting with an audience that when it's when it's small and personal, and you you kind of get to uh, co-create together. Uh, um, yeah, that's exciting. That's where yeah. I am right now. And it's easy. I mean, you, you guys at Rookery, it's very easy to interact with you. I mean, you're doing these streams so regularly. Um, you know, I, I'll link to all of this stuff in in the show notes. But it's it's quite exciting to you, you. You're not just interacting with the mouthpiece of a of a company. You know, the sort of you know, the community manager, as it were. You know, when you can sit right. there and literally watch the. The, the board of creatives as it were you know chatting about their their their, their creations it's, it's really really cool and I, I hope it's something we see i hope it's something we see from more um sort of in, in independence because i think i don't know whether you feel but that that's the that's a big point of difference isn't it right between you know a monolith like games workshop or whatever you know uh, what what's the what are the benefits of of someone that's much more of an independent well actually you can talk to them. You can understand them. You can ask those little, oh, what was the thing that was just on this piece of artwork here? Or, you know, where did that, that come from? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, absolutely. Because I think that's, a, that's one thing that, that a, a small company can, can give to a player base, you know, is that personal contact, you know, that you, that you simply can't accommodate mm -hmm. when you're a, you know, a, 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 a huge giant of the industry. So that, that's something that we're, we're absolutely planning to, to grow and develop. And we were talking about, you know, how, how we, because uh, you know, ultimately we want, we want it to be a successful business. And how do we involve the community in that? What, what, what are our options for offering? Uh, and whether it's, it's patrons that actually invite you into the, uh, the, our discussions, you get, to, you get to effectively sit around a table and chat about ideas and, and help us develop the designs and things like that. Um, uh, to, to, yeah, to establish a, a real bond between uh, to blur the lines between the, the creators and the mm. and the uh, customers, uh, to, you know, to, to be in that, to be all in together with it. Mm. That's nice, and I, I suppose. I, mean, I don't know, but I I suppose it it must have been there must have been elements of that back in, uh, you know, the early days of of GW, um, and and I'll focus on GW because I think it's certainly in the UK that GW's the the often the origin of most people's involvement in fantasy and sci-fi i think in the yeah, states D you know, D D was was a lot more of a thing wasn't it you know than, 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 it, than it was over here but you know i think inevitably as, as a company gets bigger and bigger and bigger or as it as that company got bigger and bigger and bigger as you say it became it just didn't become realistic to have that constant interaction but i think if you if you and, and this is coming from someone who has a small business that requires interaction between a customer base and all the rest yeah of it. but you can you can choose to make that almost a core part of everything going forwards if you if you want to 
you can sort of sort of put put your draw your line in the sand kind of thing and say, well, actually, one of the things that makes this so much fun is being able to have that sort of close close interaction with the uh, with the, the the community. Um, but yeah, this it's been yeah, it's been really good fun watching those rookery um rookery streams and stuff. And it was nice seeing Dark Deeds come out a few years ago because I think for for myself, you know, certainly the era that I grew up gaming in, you know, you were one of the big names of the artists so you were very influential and someone was just mentioning in the chat uh amazing name sfl mongoose um uh, uh i remember copying a bunch of mark's art for my gcses in the 90s i don't think my teacher knew what to make of them um <laughs> but you know it's it's i think it, it must be very fun having having that sort of impact on a on a fairly young creative well mind, yeah as, you know? somebody as somebody that got sent home from his art class and not doing his homework <laughs> repeatedly yes i can absolutely <laughs> appreciate that well it's funny it's our piece because a couple of the images that, that, I, that i shared were actually from the uh a sneak peek of a new digital version of the game which uh, i'm working on right now um because we're hoping to get uh we're hoping to get that out uh, in the not too distant future um it, it seems it, it's one of the things I've, I was always keen to do, um, and certainly over the, over the course of the, the pandemic, as my gaming group has, has had to transition to uh, online uh, mm. with things like Tabletopia or uh, Tabletop Simulator, playing some of those games there, going well, it wouldn't take it wouldn't take much effort for me to make a version of this to play digitally, and then all those tweaks we've been talking about to the with the rules that myself and Andy and Ryan Miller, who's who's a writer. Um, if we can put them in the new rules and we can alter them because it's, it's online and it's digital and we can make tweaks and things as we go. So we're now getting already enthusiastic about this new version uh, that hopefully will be, will be out for people to play before too long. Cause it's, and it's, so when you have control over, your, over the things that you make like that as well, that's, that's, always, that's such a joy, you know. Mm. And if five years down the line, I'm still happy to be painting these bloody cards, I think that's a mark of my... You know, my enthusiasm for it is still still burning strong. You know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think TTS uh, Tabletop Simulator has massive untapped potential for that type of thing. I, I think we saw early days. You got the absolute gaming addicts who you, the, the, these were the the guys and girls that would play a normal game with someone with you know a cardboard cutout stuck on a stuck on a base for a unit kind of thing so they were just pumping in whatever images they could find of their game system to, to sort of play just to scratch that itch you know but i noticed a few sort of indie creators really taking advantage of the fact that you can create the art files for the for the units for the battlefield for whatever and all of a sudden you could i suppose you almost um almost beta test a game in in a way that yeah um, i got uh, yeah the, the designer friends of mine are, are making prototypes on on uh, mm. on tabletopia and, and on tabletop simulator and then sharing them with their group to, to get play test sessions in so they don't have to you know go to the house and physically making stuff and just drop in our sessions and, 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 uh, and do that really really quickly so it's a, it's a great it's a great asset for that kind of thing yeah, yeah definitely definitely so so i think hopefully that gives people an idea of you know what you're talking about um you know <laughs> when it, when it comes well. to, <laughs> or at least you can i'm learning it, right? i'm learning i'm learning as i go yeah yeah i'm 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 kind of uh, uh sharpening up my my kind of enthusiastic amateur skills when it comes to kind of game creation um uh it has been a joy it's because it, I, I enjoy i really enjoy the challenge obviously as, an, as a the, my background as an illustrator uh, and then concept artist um, bringing those skills to bear on things like you know, icon design and 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 uh, 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 board components and stuff like that, and how how you fit all that stuff together, and what uh, ease of use and uh, readability and things like that, which is stuff that I don't have to, I never had to consider before, uh, uh, you know, as, as an artist. But it's just, you know, if your game is well, we, we've got a hole in a book, can you draw something to fit the hole? Um, and not not that it was ever that quite that uh, <laughs> basic. But you know what I mean? It, it's um, uh, it's a, it's a, it adds another layer of discipline to the creative process. Mm. Um, you know, workshop. It was uh, um, some of the questions we were talking about earlier was was you know how how much of uh, how much of the uh, uh, the artwork was was based on miniatures and how much of it was yeah. um, uh, act, ended up being used as sort of concept art. And with workshop, the majority of the, of the stuff that I did in my time there, um, there was because of the way that the development. Uh, uh, process works. In most cases, things like the rank and file 
miniatures were probably made before the artwork got commissioned. But I did find myself uh, doing illustrations for uh, like special characters that hadn't been sculpted yet. So you see then the illustration would then become this double dubious concept art for, what, for when the, the sculptors uh, uh, created those uh, champions or unit leaders uh, mm. and stuff like that. So that was always rewarding when you see that kind of thing happen. Yeah, so I, th I think I'd asked you a, a question in advance. Was there was there one unit perhaps or, or character or something that, you, that, as you say, came from your drawing that they went, Oh, this is bloody cool. We should do we should do this. That you're sort of super super proud of, you know. That gives you a real kick to know that oh, you know this this world, this setting, this army that's become, you know, thirty plus years of of, of depth to it. There's this little nugget in there that 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 come out of my noggin, you know. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's there's been a few. I think the one one probably uh, uh, has had the most significant would be the Green Knight. Oh, wow. Because um, oh. I did the artwork uh, for that, and then uh, uh, Michael Perry uh, did the sculpture for it. And it's, and it's the one I think that, that, I mean, it's regarded as one of his best sculpts, and he's, you know, yeah. he's a phenomenal yeah. sculptor wow. anyway. And, and then Mike kind of, McVeigh kind of when he did the incredible paint job on it, didn't he? So you had right. that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. Well, yeah that, when it goes full, full circle like that, yeah, um, yeah that's. That, that, that's incredibly rewarding um, when you get to see that happen. Yeah. Do you, nice. do you still get that that feeling now? When because there's been some of your sort of classic artworks that they've kind of dipped back into. So when they reimagine some of the characters from the past, they've like uh, they've used some of that artwork to create new miniatures, like Mephisto, for an ex as an example. That's a picture. I, yeah, they did. A, it, yeah. Do you still I'm get that kick that. when you see it? Yeah, it, it's a, it's kind of it's a, yeah, it's a thrill to see that those that that. Um, those old pieces of art are still kind of doing the rounds, you know what I mean? And they're still, <laughs> yeah. uh, we took them out to, to look at them for, uh, and, it, and maybe it's because, um, maybe they still have a, a sort of a resonance because, because there's somebody that was always into the miniature. I think whenever I did an illustration, it was, it was, it was with that in, in my mind. So uh, my, my stuff ends up being a bit more, I guess, uh, graphic, a bit more kind of comic book in it, in a way I tend to render stuff, which is probably useful when you when you're going to be sculpting a miniature, you've got it's it's, it's a it's a solid it's a solid illustration ra rather than uh, <clears throat> one that's um, uh, all atmosphere. As much as I love uh, a lot of the games workshop art I see now, uh, um, there's it, it, a beautiful sort of impressionistic uh, uh, touch to, to a lot of that stuff that is 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 truly evocative and really really captures the world. Uh, it's not necessarily that useful to give to a sculptor and say, can you can you decipher yeah. can you decipher this. Um, whereas stuff, oh, there's another one there. Yeah, Madonna. Uh, um, I did her, and then and then she got sculpted uh, afterwards. Oh, wow! Uh, so she was she was another one. I want I wanted to do Madonna, so uh, why not? <laughs> um, for Necromunda, sure. Oh well, so that yeah, that with, with Madonna, there was already the miniature. There was Jez had already done the miniature, um, and I, it, it was always a pleasure to work from either Jez's miniatures or uh, or his concept art. So that was always a treat, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was just a pose that they that they they, they captured um, for the new new edition, which was like, yeah, quite a, a real compliment. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So when you said, oh, you know, I, I wanted to to do that, you know, I wanted to paint that, or you know, Jez had done this sculpt, I, I really wanted to draw it, or whatever. Was there? And, and again, I'm sort of, I wanted to talk about this sort of era, partly because, as you say, it was when. Workshop went from being ostensibly a, a, an RPG c c company to to going right. We want to become a real big deal miniatures producer. We're going to have these two mainline games, and you know we're going to develop them. You know, uh, thankfully, or, you know we got Necromunda, we got Gorkamorka, we got more time. You know that they, they were willing to to perhaps take some of that RPG spirit of of deep dive details um and, and and try and bring it to a tabletop game and you, you had that those early i say early days uh, of of the new gw as it were you know when they became a, a real miniatures producer and you had you know when it comes to fantasy and sci-fi artists and, and illustrators you you had quite an amazing sort of stable of you there for for a, for a while and and to be honest i think gw have always done a great job with 
the artists they choose I, I think you know whatever era you look at it's it's wonderful but when when it was so early and perhaps unestablished like was it a bit of a free-for-all like as in a you know no no I want to do the painting for that or I want to do the illustration for this project or, or was it more right okay Mark you're doing this Wayne you're doing that you know John you're <laughs> doing that what was the because I'd like to picture uh, it as being yeah. very sort of wild west kick the door in you know nobody touched Mephiston he's mine you know and sort of racing to draw him first <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't recall any of that going on I mean maybe because uh, what there, there was sort of what I think was the, the golden age of, of games workshop illustrators which was which was leaving as they were they were they were walking out the door as I was walking in really so people like uh, um, Adrian Smith and Paul mm. Bonner and uh, um, Kev Walker uh, they they were going as I was arriving, um, so I I can't speak to how how those guys uh, 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 determined who did what. I, but I suspect it was very much uh, as it was when it was me and uh, Wayne and Dave Gallagher and John Blanche, which is you just sort of naturally gravitated towards certain things. I mean, Dave right. Dave did most of the covers uh, when it wasn't the big box covers that tended to be people like Jeff Taylor with, with freelance that stuff. And Wayne Wayne always has always had the things that he liked to do, and 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 uh, he, yeah, he would just uh, um, tackle whatever he, fa he fancied tackling. I think, and a lot of it came down to divvying up the rest of it between me and John. And John would do um, uh, uh, primarily the big sort of full page army black and white illustrations, and I would do a lot of the filler stuff. But over time, then I, I got to do more and more uh, uh, bigger pieces. Um, but it was always kind of, I would just come in with a bunch of uh, rough sketches and I'd show them around and people go, yeah, yeah why are you going to do them? <laughs> um, we just sort of, we kind of just, it, it was it was never, I don't recall ever, it ever being, oh no, I want to draw this and you, you draw that. It was always just sort of, we, we just sort of draw through what we wanted to draw. And um, I don't think, I, I, I can't ever recall an instance where two of us do the same thing. And even if we did, it was like, well, it's fine. We'll just propose them in the book. <laughs> nice. You know, yeah. Wow. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it was, uh, it was always just very sort of, felt very uh, collaborative. Um, uh, and, and, and if anybody had a really burning desire to, to, to paint something, they'd get to they'd do it. They, they, they would just do it. Um, uh, so yeah, the, the, you talk, you talk about the, um, the the change from being, the, the, I guess, the cottage industry mm. to, the, to the big behemoth. Um, and I don't, I, I guess that that big change happened when I was away from the studio because I, by the time they'd moved into their Lenton, where they brought the factory and the studio together, and, and then you had the big boom years of the uh, Lord of the Rings license. That was, I think, when it really took off. And I think prior to that, when I was there uh, doing sort of second edition 40K and, and fifth edition fantasy, uh, there was a constant fear. Workshop, there seemed to be a feeling that any day now, the video games industry is going to end all this. Everybody's going to stop playing tabletop and they're all going to go away and they're all just going to play video games and our, our, our days are numbered. Uh, and I think that that has been consistent <laughs> up until maybe about four or five years ago when they really took off and Age of Sigmar really exploded. Because Age of Sigmar was, came back as a, as a desperate necessity because Warhammer Fantasy Battle was dying. Nobody was, nobody was, so it was a, it was a last desperate gasp to, to still make the fantasy side of the business mm. worthwhile. Wow. But nobody expected it to take off like it did. I don't think so. I don't think. Um, so now it has. It's kind of like now maybe they're thinking, oh, maybe we can coexist with the video games. <laughs> maybe it doesn't have to be either or. But for, for years, it was just like, yeah, any day now, any day now, we're going to. We're just so gonna, you're su gonna, suggesting gonna, that sh the Shadow room. of the Horned Rat was not the global, like, Megalith that, that that changed everything and and uh, assured their future. It's a fantastic, incredible game. Um, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. They had a bit of a difficulty spike, I remember, but I loved playing that back in the day. Yeah, I think I had it on PlayStation, recent PlayStation. No, there was always this assumption that well, people have only got so much money to spend, and and they'll spend it all on video games, and and will games workshop will shrivel up, or we'll go back to being a little cottage industry, and, and you know, it, it will will just limp along for for, for years to come. So you um, you sort of wisely went right. Well, I'm going to go and work for the video game industry then. <laughs> so sod, sod, about the sod this 
GW lot. Let's, 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 you know, but, um, but it, it's, so honestly, it's always, yeah, it's, it's always been a case of after about four or five years of something, I kind of get a bit bored and want to do, I want to do something else. But my love, my, my, uh, uh, my love for, for tabletop stuff and for workshop, I've, I've had, I've had what I describe as a love like relationship with workshop over the years. I haven't, I've never hated them, but I haven't always loved them, but I've always loved the hobby and I've always loved the, the painting of toy soldiers, you know, so it's always that's always been something that, that I, I would come back to. Um, whether so that whether was, always I, a, you know, was that always a consistent then, even when you were working sort of in the video game industry, like you were still gay, you were still hobbying, you were still, you know, yeah, very much that. Has, still your happy yeah. Place. yeah, yeah, Blizzard. I don't know if it still has, but it had a weekly game night, a game club. Yeah, cool. We'd all get together in the cafeteria on a on a Tuesday night and game and paint and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, that, that sort of rekindled it. I would always collect miniatures and paint them, but in terms of actual building an army and gaming, that, that mm. kind of reignited when I was at Blizzard. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it was always uh, always something. And now it's kind of, even though I don't, I'm not, I have a little gaming group now, but we tend to be more, more kind of like your box games. So it's, it's mm. more like, oh, we'll get together and play Mansions and Madness or Escape the Dark Castle. Yeah, but I still, nice. for, for <laughs> the, thera the therapeutic benefits to me, of um, just gluing, kit bashing, kit bashing a bunch of, as I have then, a bunch of crazy old bikers that don't have any motorcycles, which is my kill team, uh, and, and, and just gluing and painting is just, yeah, at the, at the end of a, after a hard day's work, you yeah. know, I'll go and paint, paint some toy soldiers because it's creative, but it doesn't, it's not demanding in the same way. I haven't got to, I haven't got to build the world in my head. I haven't, I haven't got to, you know, it's just, it's just pleasant. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, I'll always do that. So with the w with that shift in away from tabletop initially, and then and then to, to the video game industry, like one of the things I've wondered about with it is it it seemed so. So it's, it, from what you've said, it seems like the sort of the the concept side of things and the uh, illustrations in the in the publications. You know, everyone was almost doing a little bit of everything. You know, it was all quite, you know, uh, you know, yeah, everyone was doing a little bit of everything. And presumably you you got to see the results of that work relatively quickly in the sense of, right. you know, I, I mean, if, if it's not too awkward in a question, r roughly how long would you say a uh, that, that Gretchen for instance, that piece of artwork that, that Matt's got, that sort of, of illustration for you, what what typically, what was that taking? Like? I suppose that's probably about a day's work. Right. So you you could, someone could come to you with that idea and, and with, certainly within a few days, you've got this physical thing and you can see the art and then presumably it's not a million miles away from seeing a model and, and all the rest of it. Whereas it, it, it feels like in video games, even from the very early days, it was a pretty drawn out process like you yeah. know the concept and then the actual coding and then the then the design and then you might not see the game until the slot's ready and then it inevitably misses its slot and we have to wait another year and <laughs> blah 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 like how yeah. was that as an artist so like you know because we've we've produced a couple of miniatures ranges now and it's it's been a really bizarre process you know when, when we get you know, incredibly excited about the creative process. You you work with the concept artist, and then it's quiet for quite a while. And then you have this burst of energy when the sculptors have got their hands on it, and you know you're able to book them in, and they get that done. And then it's quiet again for ages until you can get the actual thing up and running. And and it's this this there's not that sort of nice start and end point within a you know a short time frame. Like how does that affect you as a as the creative driving force in a lot of it? Um, well, I, I think with, with concept art, it is, it is oftentimes about, about volume of ideas that you generate. You know, it's, you, you tend to, uh, I mean, to be a successful and happy concept artist, you can't care too much about, about the work that you do. I think you have to, take, you have to uh, uh, take pride in it, but you can't be too precious about it. You know, if you labor and, and struggle and, and, and refine and, 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 and render, uh, and you spend ages crafting a beautiful illustration only to find that, you know, three weeks down the line, the design spec has changed and that art's no longer relevant because they're not building that model anymore. I can be crushing. So for me, particularly on something like um, um, World of Warcraft, I, it would just, I would just 
literally throw shit against, not literally, figuratively <laughs> throw shit against the wall. They, they would be, it would Back be an HR if, you, gravy, if, I, right? if I was literally throwing shit against the wall. Uh, yeah, so you you do you just bang it out, you bang it out, and and I I, I guess my hit rate on World of Warcraft was about fifty percent of what I drew made it into the game, which is a, it's actually a pretty solid number I I, I think. So yeah, it's, you kind of you, you're churning through it, you're churning through it, you, you, it's just as many ideas as you as you can get out there, um, and then that artwork gets uh, um, uh, disseminated across the team. You know, you might have twenty people working on 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 different aspects of the things you've drawn. And then in a couple of months' time, they'll do it. There'll be a show and tell, and maybe you'll see uh, that the, the, the animated model based on the concept thing you did uh, a while back. And it's always a pleasant surprise. But I think I would always try and, um, unless I was invited to directly involve myself in in the in the pipeline, I, I'd always sort of step back and I'd let them kind of get on with it and, and do what they wanted to do because all the teams were sort of were sort of self-regulating and stuff. So I would just I would just provide. Uh, um, uh, inspiration hopefully and then they would they would take it and run with it and, and rework it and sometimes and for me the happiest uh, the happiest I, I ever was was when um, a team had taken my concept art and developed it modeled it animated refined it and and what came out the other end was better than what i what i provided as a concept so that that's my that perfect uh, uh, realization of my job to take it take it from a, to kick off uh, the imaginative process and have it have the end result be, be even better. Yeah, nice. So yeah, it, it, so uh, yeah, it, it was um, it was a lengthy process, but I think as long as you think about it as, a, as, as that, as long as you, you have the big picture in mind, you know that it's going to be two years before the product comes out. But if it's a World of Warcraft expansion, three million people are going to buy it in the first twenty four hours. And you kind of well, that that'll do. That's that'll that's do. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what a I mean? nice little, nice uh, little yeah. Thing, yeah. Cool. So you you mentioned um, a minute ago. So, so typically with the GWR, like John Blanche would take the perhaps wider panoramic, you know, double page spreads box guy, and, and typically you would focus on individual characters. So you, you have to, and I'm generalizing there, but so I, I always feel like the one of the one of the reasons that artwork is so essential in a good miniatures range is a, a good miniatures range is, is typically has a has a strong setting has a, has a, a look to it has has a clearly defined setting whether or not you know much about it you know if the designers have put that work in um and you know the, the illustrators are able to to give you a, a tiny bit more of a glimpse into that setting than than the, yeah. the and the same with the, the story writers and everything was it was it trickier in the sense of only having one character to to play with and to sort of build that? And, and I'm thinking particularly about Necromunda because thinking back on it now, and obviously I've been reading it the books the last few few days, looking back through them, they're often one or two gangers at most, you know, in a thing. But we've all got this incredibly vivid, you know, idea of what the Underhive looked like and all of that. But right. largely that was just coming from one you know, one character with maybe a, a tiny little bit of background behind it. Um, how does that, how, and this is part of a longer question really, but how does that sort of change how you approach it? Like not not being able to draw the background in, I guess, because I noticed on, right. on the dark deeds and the rookery stuff, obviously you're, you're putting more more background in the, in the images. Yeah. Um, like, is it, is it, is it is it does it not affect it in the sense of well it's either way it's all up here for you anyway so it's you know it's it's coming out um yeah i mean i think it depended i mean the few the few sort of landscape pieces that that i would i, I did back in the day uh yeah you, i mean that it, it, there is a different approach to that because again you're not i mean you may have some some uh, some pieces of tabletop scenery that have been built and stuff like that but you don't you know you you have a, a, a broader uh, a remit to, to to create a world um, I think, with a, I mean, from a practical point of view, a lot of the stuff I was doing was meant to be a, a quarter page illustration. Mm. So you, you're kind of limited in, in the amount of background you want to put in there simply because it, it's just not going to read. Mm. And unless you know, oh, I'm doing a full page, a full, it's a full page piece of an entire gang. Oh, okay, so I can, I can get some more scenery in there. I mean, honestly, in, in my case, I was always about the, the figures anyway. It was always, you know, if I could put in a, a, 
a single little piece, a single little background element that mm. sort of opened open the world a little bit. That was always, that was usually in, enough for me. That was kind of like, no, that's, that's enough of a teaser um, because I, I wanted to focus on, you know, cool helmets and armor and swords <laughs> and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. I guess if I get to paint something behind there, um, um, that, that's, always, that's always interesting because it, it does open um, uh, the player's eye, eye to, a, to a wider world. Yeah, like that, I mean, that tyrannic war veteran, or oh, a few sort of shadowy figures in the background, but they're not miniatures. No, but what are they? Who can say? You know, it gives you a nice, nice little window to that. Um, I remember I was, it was a conversation I had with John Blanche, and he, was, he, he, he had had, I think it was whoever was running the studio at the time. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, uh, put a name to them in case I, I get the, the, the individual wrong. But they were, they were, they were, um, com- they were asking, well, why, why does the R, why do the illustrations not look just like the miniatures? You know, we're in the business of selling miniatures. Why do the, why don't all the pieces of art look like the toy soldiers? Shouldn't, shouldn't they be the same? You know, um, and John's response kind of baffled the guy because he said, well, what you have to understand is that the sculptors uh, are giving you one vision of the 41st millennium. Uh, the artists are giving you another vision of the 41st millennium, and the writers are giving you a third. And none of them are 100% right. Mm. They're filtering this, this, this distant future through their own creative artistic perception. So as far as John was concerned, the 40th, 41st millennium is a real place, and we are, we are merely vessels <laughs> for, for communicating that to our players. And and uh, the, uh, the head of the studio at the time was... Um, Silenced by that, but kind of stunned by uh, what is clearly a really creative artistic response. But that, that is what it is. That's why, you know, um, Wayne England basically looks entirely different to mine, looks entirely different to Adrian Smith. It's because these are our interpretations and they don't need to look like the miniatures because mm. the minute, it's all, it all exists in the same, uh, you know, cosmos. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that you, it's that has to be a reason why you ha- why you know the 41st millennium is is such a significant sci-fi setting we've had 30 plus years of some of the best people in the sci-fi and fantasy industries whether those are writers or, or artists all giving us their takes on it yeah. um and yeah. so, you know and and i think you, you i think you can see it in other settings where that perhaps there's been a dominant uh, writer or a dominant artist, and it, and it can be really cool, but it's it's not particularly um, you you you're you're narrowing your, your your possibilities of drawing people in, right? If if it's just if it just becomes one person's almost vanity project. I don't mean it quite like that, but by having so many talented people work on it, you can reach so many more imaginative, you know, minds. You, you want to come in and Absolutely. go, oh, I don't really like this bit of Warhammer, but I love that. That's how I'm going to paint my, you know, and we, we're seeing it. We often talk about Instagram being an absolute blessing for the for the hobby. But, you know, we're even, even in the, the start of the show tonight, we saw very, very different artistic takes, right, on on models. And, that you know, there is no, even Evie Metal has, you know, that they, I think they, they evolve, don't they? You know, they've changed their styles and right. all the rest of it. So there's, you know, if you want to paint super clean, color it in, you you can. If you want to try and recreate a Blanchitsu or, or, or whatever, you you can. And I think yeah. you can't argue, can you, about the the benefit that that's given to a to a setting that's that's allowed it to survive. Yeah, thirty thirty five years or whatever it is now, thirty uh, years, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's very exciting, and I I'm me and Andy are often chat about how the the artwork for Age of Sigmar. Um, for all the other things that went along with that coming out and, and its growth and all the rest of it, the artwork was just, they nailed it from day one. You know, it was, we'd never seen this, but you immediately understood where they wanted to go. You know, these, right. these huge epic, you know, sort of vistas as opposed to the the gritty, you know, Paul Dayton, Karl Kapinski sort of empire stuff. You know, that was, it was a, it's a different time. But if you just want to go and hobby in that, era that's fine too you know you've you, you've got all these options so w- with the with that leading into uh, back to video games you 
it, it, with miniatures, typically we're going to see the miniature, and maybe a bit of scenery right now, now and again. But when you're working on the video games, presumably you have the scope and, and, and the input to create not just the character pieces, but the entire um, the terrifying scope. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean, yeah. how on earth does do, 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 the change from one to the other must be? And particularly, as you said, oh, you yeah. want to lead, right? Yeah, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 why, it's why you know video games take years and years to make yeah. because yeah, it's, it's funny because I, I was I was uh, uh, talking about it uh, the other week and it was it's now doing stuff for for Rookery and 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 I'm you know I'm it's it's concept art and illustration, but I you know I don't have to draw a character from all angles because nobody's going to model it yet. You know, so I can just, just I, I don't have to worry about that bit of the character. I don't have to worry about what, what, what they're wearing on their feet because I'm not going to draw the feet. I don't have to worry about the back. But yeah, it's true. Yeah, in video games, you've, it's, you've, you've got to build an, an entire world. You, it's characters from every angle. It's the locations from every corner. It's every item, every prop, every crate and barrel. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a vast undertaking. Um, so... You, you, I mean, you kind of have to be a little bit careful about where you focus your attention as well. You know, you want to make sure that the stuff you are laboring hard on across across the whole, oh, we said hard on, laboring stuff on across the whole uh, a whole range of, of the world. It's got to be stuff that's going to draw the player's attention. You don't need to be drawing the tiny corners or the, or the distant vistas if, if players aren't even looking at those kind of things, you know? Mm. What, what stuff are they going to be interacting with? What stuff are they going to be getting up close to? Um, and, and make sure you invest in those things. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I can't imagine the pressure, especially if you're if you're going quite out there with a game, right? You know, right. if we're doing generic Western fantasy, then then you you know a, a pine tree is a pine tree, right? You know, a, a mountain is a mountain. You know, you're fairly safe, right? But diving into something a little bit more exotic or, or, or I guess particularly sci-fi stuff there's yeah there must be a lot of work to be doing uh, to be doing there it, yeah it's it's finding for me it was, it's always about finding the the hook what is it about what's the narrative behind this this character or this location what is it about this uh, uh, piece of art that is going to interest people what's it, what what makes it different from every other orc or, or space marine or mech that you've seen before. Where's where's the uh, uh, the twist that makes it mm. original and um, and uh, uh, and unique? Nice. Well, I mean that brings. Uh, us... And I would yeah. I would spend more time searching for that than I would you know rendering the art because you know a great piece of concept art can be scribbled on a on a beer mat. You know it doesn't have to be something that you labour over for weeks. You know to to render beautifully. As useful as as that can be when it comes to trans translating an idea from concept to, to model. Um, really, it's just just a, a great a great little doodle can can be all you need sometimes nice. well i mean i won't put you on the spot and ask you which beer mat doodles did end up becoming you know uh significant uh, fantasy sci-fi characters in across <laughs> the the fairly the fairly popular settings you've worked across you can think on that one i'll write that down we'll I'll, 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 I'll we'll think about that so yeah, speaking about sort of taking weeks and weeks to work on one thing and uh, and all the rest of it, let's talk a bit now about when you, as you said earlier, sort of taking a bit of ownership and deciding actually, I don't want to flesh out someone else's world. You know, I I don't want to do that anymore, or or I want to change. Um, Dark deeds and uh, and now rookery. I guess. I suppose the first question really would be: Is was it a case of I'm bored of doing this for someone else i've got all these ideas that i don't get to use or was it more literally an evolution of going i've been i've been involved in world building for so long i reckon i've i reckon i've got something here you know (laughs) i I wanna i wanna Uh, see you know like test test yourself almost because it's it's bloody terrifying when you decide to go no thank you i won't take that salary i'll i'll go and do this i'll I'll bankroll this myself kind of thing yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Um, no, I was never. I was never. Uh, I never sort of got bored with it. Yeah. I, I guess bored in, only in in so far as if, if it was something that I already done many many times and having to come back to the same thing again. But I never felt that um, uh, I, my ideas weren't given. Uh, mm-hmm. Didn't have a place to, 
to go. Uh, certainly, um, all the studios I've worked with, it's, 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 it's been, you know, all the gloves have always been off. You just throw whatever inspires you, you know, particularly yeah. at, at, at Blizzard and, and Riot, where, you know, where you are world building, where it is, well, just throw stuff out there and whatever sort of uh, gains traction. Yeah, we'll make it, we'll run with it. Um, but it, it, was, it, was, it was about uh, just sort of having ultimate ownership of it. You know, or sharing that ownership with a small group of like-minded individuals mm. that, that now became important, and not and not and not um, um, just shoot my ideas out for a mega corporation to uh, you know use and abuse. Not that I ever felt abused. Not that not that I, I ever felt that the stuff I, I did was um, uh, you know unappreciated. It was just you know you you are inevitably at the at the uh, your your work. Uh, Thinks or swims uh, on decisions that you have no part in making, yeah. whether it's just merely merely at a higher level within your studio, or the uh, the publishers or the executives get to make calls on stuff, and you mm. find that oh no, we can't do that, we haven't got enough time, or or we're going in a different direction with this, or we're going to burn that world down that you just spent six months <laughs> wetting your guts out on. So to be able to turn around and go, I I don't I don't really want you to do that. Um, and so, yeah, and, and just and being able to, and because it's not just about the art, it is about the the ideas as well, yeah. and having a, a team like 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 the Rookery, uh, where every everybody gets to chip in, everybody gets to contribute, everybody just gets to say their piece and 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 put their their spin on on the work that we're doing is is been fantastic. You know, I'm not a writer, but I get to I get to throw ideas out there, and 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 um, I get to run with ideas that that, that the writers. Uh, come mm. up with oh I like that I'm gonna I'm gonna go away and scribble that and come up with a little design for that thing and it feeds back in and you get that lovely little iterative loop when there's only five of you it's it's great to be able to just um, follow all your 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 ideas through to their logical conclusion without anybody saying well we haven't got the time for that we haven't got, oh, we can't put two extra pages in the book no the book has to be 96 pages you can't you can't it can't be 98 <laughs> but it can't because it's not divisible by four but you know what I mean it, you know we no we can't we haven't got room for that. So I'm doing. I'm working on the first book right now, and I'm doing. I'm foolishly doing all the layouts as well. So I've learned how to do book layouts over the past couple of months because somebody had to do it, mm-hmm. and I thought it would be a great way for me to control to determine where the art goes. And instead of it being, oh, just draw us a picture to fill this hole, it can be, oh, I can I can make the text run around this art here, and I can, well, you know, and, and on the on the pages where we introduce all the NPCs, I could do a double page spread for each group of NPCs for each plot. Which is wildly indulgent. Most most uh, publishers would say, no, you can't spend 12 pages introducing the characters, you maniac. But we can because it's, we're making it. We we want to do that, and we think the characters are interesting enough that they deserve that kind of attention. So we go, yeah, we'll do that then. So yeah, it's been a delight. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose that's again, like I said, sort of this this idea of influence of the artist. It's it it really is a sort of I say, you, you know, you're not you're not walking in as your know, rookery is not a group of 20 year olds on their first adventure into, you know, like like whoever the the guy um, um, who was it, Ronnie and. Um, oh, gosh, the, the guys that started workshop. Um, I can't think of the guy's name, Ian Livingston. But it just goes like, you know, guys in their 20s, you know, sort of and the D&D guys, you know, that sort of thing. You know, this is. As, you, as you've mentioned earlier, Rookery is a this is a serious pedigree behind you know that that group of creatives, and you now have a lot of influence, right? In in the sense of you are the artist, you know this isn't just a group of a handful of artists creating things with a bunch of writers and all this. This this is you know really a lot of pressure in the in the one sense, right? how True, yeah <laughs> not to you know not to you know <laughs> now i'm feeling it <laughs> but now you've pointed it out to me <laughs> but that must i think it goes back to that thing you said about the immediate feedback almost as well you know we're, we're in a we're in a world now where you can literally um you know draw something get it out there to the fans and gauge their reaction almost immediately and i'm not saying you should be reactive with with what you do, I think is important that, you, that people have a strong vision and, and sort of stick to it to to a, to a point. But what what an exciting place to be in, right? To to have that influence to to not just shape a bit of artwork in a codex, 
or right. that's a, but to literally shape an entire setting um it, it just yeah, must be yeah, ab yeah yeah absolutely we uh, uh we uh, a couple of months back we sent out uh, our uh, uh the uh document for our first adventure uh it's a, it's a, uh, the introductory adventure to the campaign that we're building it's called, called ship of fools and we had a group of play testers and they played it and they played it and they, and they, and they got the feedback and a lot of it was, was kind of the, 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 the sort of the typical stuff you might get. But a lot of it was, was sort of really imaginative suggestions. So I'm thinking, oh, yeah, we should think about that. We should make, maybe change one of the characters to do, to do this. So it, even before I've created any art for it, I'm <laughs> listening to, to the feedback from our, from our the selection of our players and incorporating their suggestions into it. So that's, that's been really exciting and really, I, I, I hope we will continue, but I know we will continue to do that with, with every step of the way. So that, it, so that as I said before, it, uh, uh, you know, we, we're getting that, that immediate feedback, that, that world building that is um, uh, um, not instantaneous, but, but is agile and able to adapt and move to the player expectations so that we include the stuff that they, that they would be excited about. You know, and the little the little bits, little flourishes, the little things that uh, um, big studios don't don't consider doing because it's just too much trouble. Yeah. You know, we don't know we're going we're to do that. We're going to incorporate some of that stuff, and we'll make this kind of stuff available mm -hmm. just because you know we're 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 a tiny little group that we can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're writing sea shanties, and we're going to do music for it as well. <laughs> you know, so sing along on the boat uh, on the journey. So it's, right. you know, you can't imagine big studios bothering to take the time. To, to dive that deep into the into a role playing uh, scenario. Yeah, they, but it, they, they it's that. interesting though, right? Like it's there's because there's all this talk. Oh, if, if so and so company gets so big, wh wh where's the place for the small producers? But it, if anything, like we, you know, we're small producers. It's 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 simply not true. There's there's this very passionate niche that don't get that from the bigger companies they need small right. creatives to to create these things and 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 they are as important you know in in that sense to the community uh, as a whole so we don't get stale so we don't end up with with just one type of fantasy and one, one type of sci-fi um and the the modern you know the tools we got available to us now like you say things like do, doing the sea shanties and touching on using apps or using tts and and things like that it's 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 pretty it's pretty exciting i think uh, i really do feel we're at the you know we're predominantly obviously min miniatures painters and stuff but the the artwork for fantasy and sci-fi that's going to survive whatever happens isn't it you know whether we do 3d printing whether we do plastic metal video games whatever the one constant is the artwork yeah um kind of thing um yeah it's, sorry it's just very exciting I just uh, I, I know I agree I think I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's been a it's been a real uh, uh, renaissance in, in tabletop over the last sort of four or five years mm. and things like crowdsourcing I think is all fed into it as well you know and I was it it's um there's a sort of mature audience as well people that that uh, that grew up that maybe played tabletop as teens then got into video games and enjoy the social aspect of that but don't really want to sit online and mm. get Worn out by some twelve-year-old during Call of Duty. They want to get together with their friends and, and game. And now, well, guess what? We'll, come, we'll all get together and we'll and we'll tabletop. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I think I think you know at, at the risk of spending another couple of hours bending your ear about it all. I think that was a really nice starting point, right, for uh, for future future conversations about it. Awesome. Um, you've alluded to quite a few times that you are. An enthusiast, a hobbyist, yourself, and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah. So we we can't not get you on a miniatures painting podcast and not have you all right. at least tell us or show us what you what you're working on at the minute with miniatures. Um, have yeah. You got some slides, man. Yep. So. Well, I start, one of the I first the first came the game to a suspension. Oh God, my 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 desk. Looks like my desk. <laughs> <laughs> you want the same. So yeah, this this is this is my desk at its very worst. I have to say, it does, it's not normally like that, but about, about halfway through a project, it'll, you know, it, it, all the paint and all the offcuts and screws and everything just starts to cram in and cram in until I'm working in like a 16 yeah. spare yeah. of a desktop. Yeah. And then I, I, I realize I can't carry on like this and I will clean it back. So this was, this was uh, in, the, in, the, in the depths of my uh, Sons of Anarchy or Kill Team build where it was just this mad kit bash. 
So that's that's the uh, yeah, and then the end result is something that's a little bit more civilized. <laughs> so I wanted to do a kill team, and this was in, I think it, I was chatting with uh, 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 Graham McNeil and uh, uh, Anne Reynolds, who were friends of mine and uh, game workshop writers, and I said, and we were talking about um, the. <laughs> The new Wurzel Gummidge, and there's, a, there's one of the episodes where there's this bunch of scarecrows that think they're bikers, and they're running around the countryside with handlebars making motorcycle noises. Amazing. And, and I think it was, it might have been Graham or Ant said, wouldn't that be a great orc uh, uh, kill team? And I said, I'm on it, I'm on it. <laughs> I, I said, yeah, I'll just take a load of uh, handlebars from orc bikers and make them motorcyclists, but not give them bikes. Wow. And that's what kill it's perfection. Yeah, it's, that's such yeah. a good idea. Uh, <laughs> right. I th- I do think Kill Team is gonna be an absolute godsend for procrastinators, butterflies, <clears throat> uh, us basically, um, and people I like us yeah. because you know the the one box of Krieg, the one box of Orcs, are just knowing okay, all I've got to do is these ten people, or you know, Orcs. Yeah, well. See, that's why I thought with the with the with the orc kill team. I thought, oh, it's only like five or six minutes, and then I bought the rule book and realised, oh no, it's a, they're a horde army. So even kill team is going to be fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> it's ages to do them. Oh, you can do it. You, you, yeah, it's that. It's so nice knowing knowing that end point is is tangible, right? Because yeah, yeah. you know, we we talked about it in our group. This idea of actually thinking about a two thousand point army kills projects dead before you even start you know yeah. we're t- trying to be more okay let's get to a thousand if we're still enjoying it we'll go further if we're not you know like that. right but i do i i really i really think kill team's gonna i think we're gonna see some pretty special hobby in the next sort of 12 months um yeah. after yeah after these coming out i suppose this is the sort of orc version of the the coconut um, you know, right. the From, coconut uh, nights and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They make they make vroom, vroom noises. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Fantastic. Well, thanks ever so much, Mark. That was. Um, I hope I hope the chat enjoyed that as much as we did. Um, yeah. There's oh, there's quite oh dear, I've missed quite a few questions here. Sorry, chat. We, we've we've been as, as engrossed as you. Mm. Just before we go, we have got two more slides of miniatures. Just to add oh, in. sorry. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Yeah. So, we have these two. Oh, Golden oh, Demon, yeah, 1990. Back in the... <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is kind of when I was, when I, I, I suppose, came to Games Workshop's attention. I've been doing a couple of little freelance bits, but this is this is kind of when I, 1990, when I, yeah. I mean, it's funny, I look at those now, and I kind of, man, they, those paint jobs wouldn't get you to the regionals, you know, the, in this day and age. But back then, um, uh, and again, my little bit of kit bashing with the uh, the goblin riding the eagle. Nice. Yes, not typically two fantasy races that get on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? It, it was inspired by I'm a massive Robbie Matthews fan, and he would do you know weird little goblin type creatures on flying mm. animals. So I think it was very much inspired by him. Nice. And that, I mean, that great unclean one. This t- talking about artwork being revisited. 20 years later or 30 years later or whatever you know those to see those original greater demons you know from from back in the realms of chaos days yeah. you know, to, to the to the modern minis being very very sort of um honest reproductions of those is is it's pretty yeah, it's very exciting it's very um, cool yeah very nice so god I, i'm excited now what's the next slide what else have we got i didn't know we had all these miniatures one more Oh yes. Oh yeah. This is my next kill team, which is wow. my Dark Sisters uh, uh, heretical uh, adeptus Sororitas. Yeah. Hereticus. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's, it's, it's 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 all yeah. It's all well. You see, but my theory is that they still they still worship the emperor. They just embrace chaos as another aspect of his divine being. So they're doubly blasphemous. Oh, yeah. But also, means I don't have to I don't have to file off all the imperial iconography. I just add more chaotic bits to them. Yeah, nice. more spice. Nice. Uh, two yeah. of the best kits there, sisters and the uh, Corvus Cabal. The Corvus that's Cabal, a, yeah. That's a win-win. Yeah, Corvus Cabal, yeah, and there's bits from the uh, um, Cordor uh, Necromunda yeah. brew. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, it's is a very. Yeah, as soon as I saw the, Cor- as as I saw the Corvus 
okay, I'm thinking, right, I'm having that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think the the entire sort of Inc. 28 community lost their minds, didn't they? When when we when we saw, first of all, we got Skatari kit. Then these Warcry kits oh, yeah. came out. Then then the Gene Sticker, and it's like, oh my goodness, you know, we've gone from all having to make our models from the one Nurgle Lord to all of a sudden we've got <laughs> 200 minis we can play with and, yeah, uh, the, and do the, things. Yeah, the choice, the choice now is great. I mean, just just knowing I was going to build a unit of these, I went, yeah, I have to go out and buy like 20 boxes of all <laughs> yeah. the kits. Yeah. I'm going, is this wise? Is this wise use of my heart? You'll, you'll use them. You'll use them at some point. Twice. So. I'm sure I will. <laughs> no, really, really nice, really nice. Um, right, let's do paint cultists then. I think um, here we are. So, uh, when we started the podcast, we wanted a hashtag for people following along. We used hashtag paint cultist. Um, if you're looking for a hashtag to follow on social media, particularly Instagram, that's going to show you, as we chatted about earlier in this show, actually a real breadth of styles um, and miniatures and games and all the rest of it. Then check this hashtag out. You've got thousands of things on there now. Um, every single week when I go on to pick stuff, I'm finding new accounts um, that I want to follow and stuff. Uh, and all I've done in anticipation that this show might be slightly longer than normal. I've, I've only picked a handful uh, for tonight. Um, but let's see what we got got up first, Matt. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah. So certainly on my social media, this caused a bit of a a stir um this this cell shaded i think that's the correct term right for for the, the, this mm. this sort of um uh, style um we see it now and again right and 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 tip but typically it'll be on something say like a tau model or a or, or an eldar model perhaps right mm. i've certainly okay. never yeah i yeah stuff that's basically warhammer mecha um i've not seen it on a on an orc um, I promise not all the models are orcs as much as I'd have liked them to have been for this week. <laughs> it's all right, a bit of variety. Um, but yeah, it's just just Very talking cool. about different interpretations. It's it has that Borderlands style again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very um, cool. I, I mean, I'd love to see a whole, a whole army of these. Would be amazing, would not they? Well, follow the account. He's 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 on it. I think this this guy is committed. Oh, <laughs> right, it's you know. Um, that's obviously that that I think it's this again, I've said this to Andy so times for his board of hearing it, but I, I, I somebody mentioned about Games Workshops releases that they basically gone out there and said, we don't need everybody to like this release. We just need some people to love it. And it feels like all of the releases are really, really sort of dilute uh, not diluted concentrated rather sort of on on the theme and on the style and it means you get you know I, I can only imagine what this guy chris sort of when he saw that box and saw this thing you know it's like the perfect marriage right of a, of a style of model and a, and a style of paint job um and i'd have never thought of it ever no um, no it's uh yeah it's just it's just belting i think um yeah, it's it's the best. This hashtag's flipping brilliant. Not to you know toot toot or anything, but it's um <laughs> it's, been, it's been really selfishly it's been really fun. Um, because I think sometimes, particularly with Instagram, you can fall into a bit of a an echo chamber almost of of styles and uh, and accounts. Um, yeah. so it's nice to yeah, it's just nice to see a few Definitely. others. Yeah, Any of you um fancy the the newer orc stuff? Tickled your pickles? No. Oh no. No. Um, the <laughs> the cruel boy stuff was perfect for me because it's dark and dingy and for me that's i, I, I love like, them like I love them. <laughs> yeah it's amazing <laughs> this this is i i like how the fun aspect of this and how much fun the new uh, 40k orc stuff is <laughs> but it's just a bit too on the cartoony side for me uh for, for orcs i like the the gritty dark mean <laughs> mean I do like, want the shark. lord of the rings the hobbit orcs i really want the sharky boy that i do really yeah. That one miniature, I wasn't into any of them, but that character, uh, and a bit like what you were saying about having an endpoint, just one character is enough for me. Yeah, I did. I loved painting my uh, squig with the goblin on. That was really cool. So I would love to just paint the yeah, the Sharky boy. So when that Big comes time. out, I'll be getting it for sure. Well, I mean, I mean, I bought that box for Zodgrod yeah <laughs> um, and i'm so pleased he's done and on the shelf and, uh, and and on his way to my mate actually but 
I built the normal box of boys from it as well, or one of the squads of boys from it. And I, I have been itching to do Gorka Morka for like two years now, like to re, to revisit it. And when I, I I said to Andy at the beginning of the year, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to only paint green things this year and just see what happens. <laughs> like, and I've, I've almost managed it. Um, Me too. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, and I built that squad of, of Beast Snagger boys. And they're just they're just perfect 2021 walker walker sculpts um so it's uh yeah it's um i, I must admit the squig pigs aren't for me um you're but, the sharks mate but, but the, 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 too, the, many the, legs. The, <laughs> too many legs yeah it's it's like i get it and i'm glad they've done it but um the, the regular lads for me are just yeah spot 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 on so more orcs. I'm, I'm looking forward to the new the new uh, orc boys kit. Yeah, I'll oh, probably pick one of them up. Yeah, big time. Yeah. You, you got to right. It's just a kill team, right? It's just a little, just a little kill team. And and those commandos. Because <laughs> I mean, the commandos. That's commandos, just one yeah. squad. It's just one squad. Just yeah, there we team. go. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm tr- trying to trick myself into a new army. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. I'm, I mean, I yeah. Obviously, finished up that cruel boys project this week, so can't wait to I get wanna, my hands I on. Pick. Them. I, I oh. definitely. I'm hoping that they do a, a, a cool, uh, uh, cool boys for Underworld because I'm yeah. hoping that will be like four definitive cool boys, and that's all that'll do. Yeah. Well, I mean, Good hopefully shout. it will Good just shout. be just be grots, um, various different nefarious uh, goblins, um, and maybe one, yeah, maybe one long suffering cruel boy um, <laughs> in, the, in the set. Um, right, what's up next, Matt? What we got? I can't remember what I picked. Oh, nice. Oh, so this, uh, I forget the robot's name, or Man of Iron, I think he is actually. Um, in fact, I'm sure that's what he is. Speaking of sort of box games being a nice self-contained hobby project, um, right. I just thought this was a nice marriage of, again, paint style, miniature, self-contained project. Yeah, yeah wonderful. It's, it's just, yeah. Nice crisp it's, um, light. Yeah, but it, I don't know, it's just... Again, I think maybe like we said about Kieran Stormcast, I just feel like it's just a very good representation for someone who doesn't know about the hobby. Mm. You know, they, they're they going to look at that and they, I reckon they'll. it wouldn't take them long to get to effectively a Blackstone Fortress from mm. from this guy. Um, so, yeah, and actually, I, I think a really nice paint job. I think the NMM is, is particularly uh, good. I, I quite like grungy NMM. It's just the right amount of rendering, is it? Mm. And the right amount of weathering. And I think that kind of restraint yeah. is really good. So you just got subtle shading. And that's a nice yeah, restraint. Yeah, that's a really yeah. nice. Sort of I really, um, really like the plinth as well, the way he's used the, mm. the same size tiles as you use in Blackstone Fortress. The tarot. The, oh, yeah, no. Nice. It's yeah. giving me Battletech urges, mate. That's what that's doing. It's making me want to get some Battletech on the go. <laughs> Anything like that makes me want to paint some sort of mech suit, yeah. especially like a pale white one all the time. You see it, I just want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. We'll it's, it, uh, it was a very, I think they sold a lot of boxes just because of this guy. Um, I know a lot of my Mechanicus friends were absolutely mm. falling over themselves to get hold of this guy. What I'd I, have given it away. What, what I like <laughs> about this miniature is I, uh, when I was looking through the, um, the Gothic and the Eldritch book the other week, this is pretty much in there as as a concept <laughs> it's it's they're a little bit different but they're very similar like just it's just called a robot <laughs> yeah which is really cool yeah. nice love it right what's uh what's up next oh yeah wow. yum oh. uh not entirely sure I, I very poorly actually i didn't read the comment underneath this um this account nate's got a bunch of stuff on there recently all, all really nice atmosphere to his pieces I'm afraid i don't know where this one's from i'd hazard a guess at some sort of kickstarter um but uh, again i don't know what game it's from maybe the chat will from will help out Black with sun it miniatures there we go thank you is that Black sun? yeah I missed that um so one not not some random kickstarter black sun one of the oldest uh, manufacturers of, <laughs> of larger scale miniatures. <laughs> we'll just edit that out. It's all right. It's not large. Apologies to Blackstone. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but I just, yeah, I think we, we bang on about atmosphere and stuff quite a lot uh, and sort of illustrative style and, and, and all of that. I think this is just, um, 
yeah, I think this just just nailed it. I love the eyes particularly. Uh, beautiful palette, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, big time. Cool. That's cool to know. So yeah, put that with Black Sun. I quite fancy this mini. To add, yeah. add, I bought a few years ago. Adrian Smith did a, a they did a game based on his hate um, graphic novels, and oh, yeah, they basically just got all the best sculptors in the industry at the time to make all these amazing ostensibly chaotic barbaric characters um and uh yeah i mean obviously a massive fan of his work so i had to pick that up but this would this would slot in very nicely yeah um you know yeah. this would and i think you know for that that one day when i get the time to do some sort of rpg but using the hate models that would be uh yeah this dude this dude should find his way in for sure. Could it be a gargant in the Cruel Boys? Could I don't think he'd be big enough, mate. I think G Dubber catching up awfully quick, aren't they, with 54 millimeter? Um, I think I think a gargant needs to now be about the size of this microphone. Yeah, could be a troll of some sort. Yeah, very nice, very nice. But again, I think you know this is this is something we we talk about in a future episode. But I think Games Workshop right rightly or wrongly have their own style of modern games workshop stuff now and mm. i for me i like a project to look coherent agree yeah um so i would need to find a whole army's worth of miniatures like the enormous box of hate miniatures that i have just just up here yeah. to Last run as a, you know as a slaves to darkness army that would work brilliantly and this guy would be a fantastic you know mercenary ogre or whatever yeah <laughs> but uh yeah, I think gone are the days of, of for me anyway, of, of viewing third party or, or alternative miniatures producers as sort of one off pieces to add in to a GW army now. Yeah, I agree. It's got to, got to be coherent. Otherwise, it feels weird. So mm -hmm. you can do a whole army of something else. But, yeah, you've got to have that thing. This whole point of an army, right, is coherency. I think so. And I guess we're lucky enough now where actually, you know, if you've got the means, you can print. Uh, or get someone to print you a whole army of someone else's take on a an elf army or a dwarf army or, or whatever. Unless it gets taken down. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but nice one, Nate. I think that's a belter. Um, right up my street. That yeah. one. Uh, what's up next, mate? Ah, good. Back to back to orcs and their friends. Um, this was the last Black Sailors release, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Big Child Creatives, uh, another sort of titan of the, the larger scale miniatures producers. Um, this was The Chef. Um, the chicken's amazing on the top. Like, <laughs> as, as a mod, as a critter, yeah. like a chicken on his head, it's just the one. Um, yeah, it's, this is, I still kick myself that I don't have all the Black Sailors stuff because it's, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it, I, there's a lot of Paul Bonner in that model, I think, mm. sort of inspiration. Um, and, uh, and and I, lo I love, and I think maybe it's because I'm, because I, I got into the genre and everything through Games Workshop, I love seeing orcs and trolls and things painted in other colours mm. um, to, to what we've right. seen. Like, it's such a simple thing, but they're immediately different. Um, Non-green orcs yeah. tickle my fancy every time. Mm. Yeah. Is this uh, is this one on the shelf, Mark? This bust? No, is it part of the no. collection? It's, no. Uh, yeah, it's a nice it's a nice set, man. I'm glad they did some busts from that that range as well. Um, yeah, on yeah, the to do yeah. list. <laughs> on the to do yeah. list. Um, and then lastly, I think is there one more? The yeah, Asian Marine. One. Gotta have a Marine. Can't be an episode Yay. about going without a Marine. Marine. Um, I'm all over this. Like, oh, Thurian vibes different wow, style yeah. to how we see marines painted i just yeah, yeah. i'd right. like to see the new uh gray knight character in this style mm. I, I kind of fancy picking up that mini. so seeing this is like oh yeah oh yeah it's just there's a mm. lot of attention to detail on this mini like the the conversion work the paint work it's um i think it's like the more times i've looked at it it, I'm enjoying it more each time. Yeah. yeah, I like the chest eagle, which people always kind of mess up, like picking out all those individual feathers too much. But it's like a nice, 
uh, coherent silver on that chest eagle. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, a look bit all of bloom. The, yeah, yeah. Highlight. and look at all the colours on that knee. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really, really, really nice. I mean, obviously, it's really nice. That's why I picked it. Um, I thought it was really nice, so I picked it. But uh, I think it's it's rarer and it's rarer and rarer now to see a marine done in s- some way that you haven't seen before. I was right? going to say that it goes back <laughs> to our marine episode, yeah. and then here we are. I've yeah. not seen a marine like this, and some people are like, "Ah, oh, marines are boring." But if you can do a new take on a marine, then fair play yeah. to you. It's, uh, that's cool. Absolutely, yeah, it's really good. So, really yeah. like it. A tiny little snapshot of the paint cultist hashtag. So yeah, I would really recommend that you guys go out and uh, and and check it out. So what have the chat been up to that I've been neglecting horribly? Halfling hen <laughs> parties need to be in more RPG sessions. I think that one's probably for you, Mark. Um, oh yeah, that yeah, that that's something. <laughs> my my, my <laughs> contribution to uh, the first adventure for for rookery. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a hen party of halflings on the boat with enormous penis hats. So they look like the old Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> there we are. Oh, I can't Where really, was that in the yeah, there you I go. really follow that. Um, <laughs> um, oh, it's nice to see so many new names in the uh, in the chat this evening as well. I hope you guys have hope you guys have enjoyed it. Yeah, people loving the hex base, monk loving the hex base there. There's a monk in the chat responsible for our little paint cultist uh, image in the bottom right there. The cracking artist and new recently took on as a tattoo artist. So congrats there, mate. I will be booking in at some point. I've got, um, I was just going to say, I've got a question before uh, things. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. going to say to, to Mark, so I'm meaning to ask it. Obviously, a lot of your earlier stuff was, was pencil, paper on boards. Did, when the video game started to sort of happen, did you sort of transfer into a more digital realm, or is that? I was I was frog marched pretty much when I was at Sony <laughs> to a Photoshop training course. I didn't want to go because I got the job with with a, with a traditional portfolio, and I, I'm like, no, I you know I had a computer at home, but it was really just a very expensive paperweight. Um, and when I started at at, uh, at Sony, they said you you really should you know kind of move with the times a little bit. So off I went to a couple of couple of days of Photoshop and realized, oh yeah, actually this is this is going to be really handy. But up until very recently, I I was still doing my sketch work, my my concept art on uh, traditionally it was still very much pencil on paper because I, I found that uh, um, something got lost when I was working, even working on a Cintiq, which is what I use now, which is a big graphics tablet you draw on. Even on that, it was well, it's a stylus on glass. It's not the same as pencil mm. on paper. So I always thought it lost something, but very recently I've I've uh, I've been dealing with some uh, my hands again old and I'm dealing with a bit of arthritis I think in my hands. So I thought well let's, let's try and move entirely digital because you can control the, the pressure sensitivity so you can effectively touch touch the, the stylus to the to the surface really lightly and get a really solid pencil yeah. pencil line. Uh, and uh, I thought oh, this is the beginning of the end. If I go full digital, that, that's it, really. Just hang up my my my, my artist credentials. I'm just a, I'm just a pixel monkey. But I've actually found it really good. And, and now I'm, I'm doing pretty much everything digital to save my poor aching hands. Um, so yeah, so it's been a slow, really reluctant transition, uh, dragged kicking and screaming into the digital age. But now I now I'm there. I've kind of I've embraced it a bit. You know. So yeah. Nice, fantastic. Yeah, so sorry, yeah, there's man. no I more original art. There's no more. There's no more original art. It's, I know. It's, that's it. I don't. That's yes, it. That's what you, was you just, just have to box up, up a, a box up a computer. <laughs> just send it. Well, of course now now they're doing that. that what do they call that? TFL, digi- the fully, the entirely digital oh, stuff. Oh, the, 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 the all NFTs. That uh, yeah. Uh, that's just, yeah. Whatever they call it. All like that non-fungible <laughs> tokens or something. <laughs> No, I, I will not be and, and, until until I can't pay the mortgage. <laughs> I will not be doing that. Just go full like bourgeois and just yeah, just draw it on a tablet, sign the tablet with a sharpie, and just there you go. Just add add the cost on it, you know. I'll just add the cost on the end. I was <laughs> gonna say because like when when obviously the the Gretchen turned up and you can you look at the the board it's on and you can see every every pencil mark and it's 
I don't know, there's something about it. I, I don't know how to explain it probably very well. You just, you can't... Yeah, it's just awesome. <laughs> that <laughs> feeling, isn't I, it? I, yeah, I, I, you, you, can't, you, I, you can't beat the, the, the yeah. real traditional art, I know, you know, and... Uh, um, so, yeah, I still, I still value that. That's, anytime I see a beautiful, real painting, hmm. um, you know, that... that, that I, it always it always impresses me more than the, the, the digital because the digital is so convenient, it, but there's so many shortcuts. So from a production point of view, it's it's really useful, but you know it it, it lacks the soul. Yeah, you know? that's the that's, one. It's so. that tactile nature, right? It's, and it goes right back to what you said at the very top of the show, Mark, about going to video games and then coming back because you act, you want something tactile, you want something physical. There's something just very comforting you know i still buy cds i I still buy cds fuck you in your in your itunes (laughs) hey well hey come to the apocalypse fuck you in your itunes come to the the apocalypse and and uh, you know and and you haven't we haven't got the internet anymore the guy the guy with the boombox and the old cd player he'll be all the parties it's true it's why i'm we have discussed making a mixtape for classes yeah that's that's why i still got a load of vinyl (laughs) Just can't yep. beat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Right. Um, were there any more questions, chaps? I'm sorry if I didn't art check with you before we uh, before I went to close out. But I think Mark, oh, you covered sort of just about everything we we'd wanted to, yeah. to, to chat about beforehand. Um, so firstly, yeah, massive thanks for for, for, oh, for coming for on. Me. You know, it's it been lots of fun. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, it's been a ton of fun to, to listen as well. Um, guys, I'm going to put all the details for Mark's new project, the the Rookery Publications, in the description. Go and check it out. Be really fun, maybe Please to do. talk to you guys in in the future. You know uh, about it. You know again because that'd I think be, that would be great. Got, yeah. there's, I'm I'm keen. You've got me hooked. Put it that way. Like when I was Excellent. doing the research, I was we watching have, a few of the streams. Our, I was like, join our, yeah, join our yeah. Discord because that's yeah. all happening. Um, so it's uh, yeah, exciting, exciting times with, with that. And I hope the chat, I hope you, uh, you guys and girls have all enjoyed um, to listening to someone I think who's had a fairly significant impact on on the hobby that we've all sort of enjoyed and like to lose ourselves in and whatnot. And uh, yeah, nice to see so many new names there as well. Thanks as ever, Matt, Andy, Rich. Love Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks for hosting. It's been it's been an absolute delight lovely stuff so guys if you ever want to reach out to us we're on all the usual social medias it's not difficult let us know if you'd like us to try and reach out and find some other guests to have on to talk about different areas of the the miniatures painting hobby you let us know and we'll do our best to to sort of bend their ear and have a natter and and see what little nuggets we can get uh out of them um to sort of yeah chat about down the pub uh cheers mike great episode yeah lovely mark is a dude that's excellent i think that's Ah. that's quite a succinct way of doing it mark is a dude so (laughs) thanks everyone for watching Thanks, you guys, for being here. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Ciao. See ya.